Hello, and welcome to part three, the final part of 2020, A Car Odyssey. This third video I'm calling Moving Forward, and with the not really a clickbaity title, actually a very legit title, Finding a Coupe with Adaptive Cruise Control. Because it's really hard, as I'm about to show you. In fact, let me show you. So, we established in the last uh, video where I ran through all my cars up till now that my current car is the 2018 Cadillac ATS Turbo V6. I think it's called the Premium Performance. It's 335 horsepower, does 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. And it's roughly around 50 grand was it was list back around back in the day three you know three years ago when i bought it and i will tell you i love this car i have loved this car since i had it i still love it to this day but it's on a lease and, and it's about to go out of warranty and by the way i've had a, a few issues with the car and I've, it's had some warranty service and with out of warranty, some of those repairs would have been in the many thousands of dollars. So I'm not going to own this car out of warranty. So I'm not going to buy it when my lease is up because that's what people, well, if you really like it, you should buy it after the lease is up. No, well, for one thing, I'd pay too much. There's all sorts of reasons. So I set out to buy a coupe with an adaptive cruise control. Those are my two, I have two rules. Those are it. So my first choice, now I've had a Mercedes. Those, you know, you saw those were the before the Cadillac. So I was thinking, well, maybe my next step should be an Audi or a BMW. And I remember I started this Odyssey looking for this new car. I usually start about a year before my lease is up. So this was last, you know, February, March, beginning of 2020. And I was in love with the Audi. Oh my God. The S5, that's, that's the car I want. Uh, it's a V6, 349 horsepower, zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, around $56,000. So it's comparable in price and performance and everything else, kind of, to the Cadillac. Well, there's gonna be a problem you're gonna, we'll, we'll discover later, but or, barring the expense, if I'm well, if I'm if I need to cheap out a little so I can get a more affordable, the A5, which is the same as the S5 with the four-cylinder engine. And by the way, these uh, at zero to sixty in seven seconds. But I'm not, you know I'm I'm not a drag racer, and the price is forty-eight nine. Now, by the way, these prices are with the adaptive cruise control, which is an add-on. So if you go look and you say, well, the base price of these is actually lower than that. Yeah, but the adaptive cruise control costs extra, and so that's included in that price. So I was set. This was it. I, I had made my decision. Uh, there, the, the search, my search criteria had been met. I loved the car. Uh, a friend of my friend Brian's, guy he works with, had has an R, R, Audi RS5, and I've seen that and sat in that, and, and I'm going, well, the S5, which is... The RS5 is even more powerful and more, I think it's a V8 and it's, oh, it's awesome. I can't afford it. It's, you know, we're getting up into the seventies and eighty thousands, but you know, 56,000, I might could swing that. Okay. So problem solved in March before anything started. Oh wait, before anything started, you remember March? <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the COVID came and the pandemic happened and the lockdown happened. And the next thing you know, my Cadillac has been sitting in my garage going nowhere since March. I think I, I probably haven't put 2,000 miles on that car this year because I don't go to work anymore. I work from home. I only go to the store. And, and then only when I have to. So like every couple of weeks, there's a, there's a trip to Trader Joe's. By the way, during old people time, the greatest thing they ever invented. 
for people that are old or, or more susceptible, you have to, you know, you have to show ID and stuff, but they let you in before the store officially opens and there's like no one in there and it's shopping is a breeze, especially like Trader Joe's, which is always, pa oh, and Costco, same thing. They have old people time. Now, by the way, back in the early days, it was like every day. Now it's like a couple of days a week, but I still, so a couple of, every couple of weeks I go to Trader Joe's, every couple of weeks I go to Costco and every now and then I'll sneak in a trip to Kroger for anything they don't have. Anyway, but that's all the driving I do. I mean, none, zero. So I'm going, why am I going to pay 50 more or more thousand dollars to park a car in my garage for, for a year? So I said, well, let me, let me start. So back into search mode, what other options are out there? Oh, by the way, I will have, I, I will run, I'm going to make videos of build and configure things using their tools on their website where I'll, 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 I'll build and price without me being in the picture. Cause I'm sure you're sick of seeing me anyway, but it'll just be the screen. So, and I'll run through and with commentary and tell you what I'm doing and why I'm picking the options I am. And you'll see that when I really spec these, like especially these Audis, when I spec them out the way I really want them, they're way more expensive than that. And again, then it would be sitting in my garage for months on end with hardly ever going anywhere. So, well, it turns out last year, I guess, it may have even been around Christmas time, my brother, my older brother Joe, bought a Honda Civic coupe touring it's called the touring model which has adaptive cruise control and he loves his honda he goes on he loved it he went on and on he says what a great car it is now yes yeah, 100 only 174 horsepower it's only a four cylinder zero to 16 8.2 seconds i can live with that especially if it's only 27,000. and by the way this is 27,200. there will not be a video of me configuring a honda because it's like it's one price there's like no options it's like you get the touring it comes with adaptive cruise control and then there's like i think you can change tires but that's i don't yeah so it's gonna be 27 000, and i'm going that's half the price roughly and if it's going to just sit in my garage, that would be fantastic. Problem solved. So now it's like April and I don't have to think about it anymore. I'm going to get me a Honda Civic when my lease comes up. Well, I don't know how many of you follow automotive news. Honda has discontinued the Honda Civic Coupe. They're only doing sedans, only doing four doors. This is no longer an option. Well, yeah, maybe if there's still one on the lot by the time the, my lease rolls around, or I guess at that price, I could have gone ahead and run out and bought one right away and just parked it. But that ceased to be an option. So back to the drawing board. So let's go look some more. So what else is out there? Well, we know about the Mercedes and the BMW. So the BMW, I went and quick, these, these by the way, these, again, these are quick specs that I did on their website just to get the base price, the, the cheapest one I could get with adaptive cruise control, and these are they. The 430i, which is the, the, the four cylinder, two, two liter, 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds, 49 grand, and then the turbo, the 440, which is the turbo 2-point liter engine, 382 horsepower, 0 to 16 in 4.3 seconds, just a couple thousand dollars more. Well, this is the, these, 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 these are a possibility, although this is the new, by the way, BMW 4 Series. And if you look at those, those little kidney grills in the front, they're not so little anymore. Look, look at the size of those mothers. <laughs> they go from the, from the bottom of the front of the car to the top of the hood. It's the entire front of the car is now these kidney grills. I'm not sure, but it's still not a bad looking car and the price is kind of right. Again, go watch the video that I will be posting uh, shortly on where I build and configure these things to the way I really want them. And you see that these prices are way lower <laughs> than <laughs> it's going to actually end up costing me. So, yeah. 
And then of course there's the Mercedes, but here's the problem. By the way, this is what caused, this is how I, I think I already explained this in the other video about why I ended up in the ATS. Because Mercedes decided, oh, we're going to make the, 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 the six or eight, in this case eight, we're not going to do a six cylinder coupe anymore in the C-Class. We're going to, we're going to do an AMG so we can charge way more money. By the way, back then it was like $20,000 more. I, this, these are the 2021s and you notice it's only $10,000 more. But that means that the, the two, the, the two liter, the four cylinder is, well, that's awfully pricey. And then, again, this is the bare minimum. This is base model, no, no, nothing added, no options except adaptive cruise control. So 50,000, 61,000. And besides, I've had two Mercedes and while I loved my C350 coupe, the red one, I loved it. In fact, I would have bought another one of those except again, when my lease ran out on that, Mercedes wasn't, didn't have anything like it. They didn't come out with it for like another six months after my lease was out. And I'm not, you know, and they didn't. Anyway, so I was screwed. So that's how I ended up in the ATS in the first place. And then of course, can't buy another ATS because they don't make those anymore. But I can't go back to this because now they're too expensive, especially if you start adding options, which again, go watch the video where I build and price the Mercedes coupes and you'll see how pricey they get. Well, so now what do I do? BMW, Mercedes, Audi. Nobody else is making coupes. Okay, there is the Camaro, the Chevy Camaro. And I've had several Camaros. Remember going back, looking at my history, lots of Chevys. It's a, it's a, it's a no brainer, except they don't have adaptive cruise control for the Camaro. You cannot get a Camaro with adaptive cruise control. Okay. Okay, you can get a Mustang with adaptive cruise control, but I've never really been a fan of the Mustang. And so I'm not even gonna build and price one for y'all for, for the video. That, that's how lazy I am. That's also how much, I, I'm just not interested. I'm not gonna get one, so I'm not gonna do it. So I was kind of morose and, I was, and my friend Brian, one day we, we were sitting, I think we were eating something, having lunch somewhere or something. He goes, wait, you need a coupe with adaptive cruise control? And I said, yeah. He said, the Dodge Charger. Now remember, I don't know if I mentioned, Brian is a police officer. He drives a Dodge, I mean a Dodge Challenger. He drives a Dodge Charger at work, his police car, his squad car is a, is a, is a Charger. And he said, well, the Dodge Challenger is like a, the coupe version from, from Dodge. And it, that, that comes, it has adaptive cruise control available. Well, I say, let me look into this. So first off, they have a SXT model and a GT model, which are V6s, the, the Pentastar engines. They're fine little cars, but if I'm going to own a Challenger, it's going to be a Hemi. So the RT, which is the lowest level with a Hemi, it's the 5.7 liter, uh, 375 horsepower, zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. You get one of these for $40,000 with adaptive cruise control. And all of a sudden the little wheels start turning. I'm going, huh, not a bad looking car. Kind of reminiscent, but remember my driver's ed car? The 68 Dodge Charger? Back when the Chargers were coupes and looked a lot, it looked a lot like this car. So I'm thinking it's kind of a retro thing to going back 50 years. It's a gorgeous looking car. I love this triple nickel color. I like the hood scoop. I like everything about this. Well, then I start playing around with the build and price. By the way, if you're ever buying a car, you've got to go to these websites and do the build and price and try out with the different options. So everything, and I've watched tons of videos and basically everyone said, if you're going to get a Hemi Challenger, you need wider tires because it has so much torque that if you just get the regular uh, 245s that it comes with, that 
your back end's going to let loose and you're just never going to be, it's going to over torque the tires. The tires not going to be enough tire to handle the torque. So I went back and respect putting in the nine and a half inch, the 275 tires, throw on the shaker package, which I just think is adorable. And it actually shakes because it's attached to the engine. So it's really cool. The nav system, this is something I'd like that was not a requirement. Only adaptive cruise control was the hard requirement. Oh, and then the upgrade stereo, because a whole bunch of the videos I watched were people who had bought the Challenger with the stock stereo, and they said, uh-oh, it was horrible, and oh, I hated it. And one guy actually traded the car in for another Challenger with a better stereo. Most of them ended up putting in aftermarket stuff, but that you know that's a pain in the butt and hard to do. So, anyway. Well, anyway, this thing specs out at like 48. And I'm going, that's zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Da, da, da. I'm going, this is sounding pretty damn good. But then, once you get on these websites, it's hard to stop. It's like, so then I started looking at the scat pack, which is the next step up. There we go. The 6.4 liter V8, 485 horsepower, 110 more horsepower, uh, 4.2 zero to 60, and base, well, again, with the adaptive cruise control. It's only four, it's only $3,000 more for the much bigger engine. And they actually get, actually get a few other things in there with, for your 3,000. It's not just the bigger engine. Well, then you go ahead and spec this thing up with the nine and a half inch uh, 275 tires and the shaker package and the, and the nav system and the Alpine stereo. And we're up to 53. So, you notice that's a lot, that's $10,000 more. Let's, let's go back and look. It was seven thousand, it was $8,000 more on the, on the RT, the 5.7. With the scat pack, it's it's ten thousand dollars more, but it's really nice. Now, I don't have a slide because the price is going to skyrocket up. I went ahead and did a build in price, and I maybe I'll include a video for it. For the, they have a wide body scat pack. I don't know if you've seen the uh, Charger wide body. Well, go watch the build in price video. I will build in price. I promise at least one wide body. So you can see, but basically they have fender flares, so it makes the car like three and a half inches wider. But then that allows, instead of 275, nine and a half inch tires, you go to 11 inch, 305 inch tires. So now you really got the grip back there. Gorgeous car. But the wide body package adds like $6,000. So look at these numbers, add at least $6,000. And you can see why maybe I might have backed off of thinking about a wide body and gone back to the, the regular body. But I really like those wide tires. And again, 53,000, it's, it's actually, and that's fairly loaded up. And actually that is loaded up. That's very loaded up. And compared to like the base prices of the Audi and the Mercedes and the BMW, it's, this is cheaper, a cheaper car with Bigger engine, more power, more fun to drive. Oh, and a bigger interior. The, the, I don't know if you've ever sat in a Challenger. These things are giant inside. The trunk, the trunk, you could put two bodies and, and maybe a, a couple of smaller bodies. <laughs> Huge trunk. I mean, it, like, what, what are they, uh, usually for luxury cars, they use golf get bags. You could get like six golf, six, eight golf bags in this thing. I mean, it was, it's just gigantic. Huge trunk. Of course, back seat doesn't have a lot of leg room, but it has more leg room than a, than a, than a Ford or, or than a Mustang or a Camaro or actually probably even, certainly more than my Cadillac. So, so I'm thinking, this is, this is how I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards this. So here's my summary slide. So the Cadillac, which was my first choice to double up on, discontinued. Then the Audi, too pricey. Then the Honda Civic, which I settled on, you know. So basically I was settled on those first four. Those, those were decisions made that then got unmade because, uh, well, 
price for value with the Audis because if you're only going to drive it five to 8,000 miles a year tops, why would you pay that kind of money? Then the Civic gets discontinued, BMW, and then the Challenger. And so, like I said, go, you can go watch the build and price videos. I'm going to do one for the Audi. I'll do one for the BMW. I'll do it for the Mercedes, and I'll do it for the Challengers. And on the Challengers, I, I will build, maybe I might do more than one for the Challengers. So depending on how long they run, I might chop them up. But I'll do the, the 5.7 Hemi, the RT. I will do the Scat Pack, and I will do the Scat Pack Wide Body. By the way, they also then they also still have more up bigger than that. They have the Hellcat and then the Hellcat wide body and then the uh, the the what is it the they have one above that the Hellcat Red Eye and then there's a there's another one. Anyway, sports sports stock stock something anyway. But so these are so basically i'm narrowing down on the challenger and so now the question is it's really kind of the question is well which of these challengers i'm going to get so when you're watching the audi bmw and mercedes build and price videos that i will be posting those are for your informational purposes only because they were just they convinced me not to buy those cars and you'll see, because I, I, I do a, I'll do a running commentary, so you'll, you'll, you'll hear why. What? I have to pay for paint? Yes. Uh, the BMW 440i, the only free paint color is white. Boom. That's it. You want any other color, it costs at least $500 more. And there's a couple of colors that cost thousands of dollars more. On the 430 BMW, you can get black or white for free, and then all the other colors cost money. And the Audi, they're all similar. Almost all these luxury cars, you only get like a very basic palette for free. And then they have all these other colors that cost lots of money. They, they, they nickel and dime you to death. Well, so does Dodge on the Challenger, really, when you get down to it. But not on the colors. <laughs> the colors are all, all free. You can pick any one of those Dodge cars. And there's lots of them. You'll, you'll see on the configurator. So... The Audi, BMW, Mercedes, those videos will be posted for informational purposes. Feel free to look at them. Again, you can get my opinions about the different options and things as I go through. And then, of course, the Challenger, I will configure a, a, an RT, a Scat Pack, and a Scat Pack wide body. Maybe broken into more than one video, depending on how long it runs, but yeah, probably not. Probably just be all, all in one video. And I think you may have guessed already that I'll probably configure them all in triple nickel. Because, <laughs> I don't know, I just really... It's, I've, I, I went to a Dodge dealer and actually looked at it about, I don't know, three months ago. It was the height of COVID, or, you know, so everybody's wearing masks. and We didn't even go inside the dealership. The guy came out and took us and showed us a car and I got to... I test drove one, which kind of sold me. You know how test drives get you. But, but it was way too early. I mean, my lease still had six months to run. But anyway, so that's where we're going. So look for the build and price videos, which will be coming so, coming soon. If well, actually, by, maybe by the time you write, they, they may already be up there. Well, who knows? Maybe by then I will have figured out how to say. And you can check the build and price video at the, you know where they put the little things that pop in. I'm I'm new to this YouTube thing. I haven't figured all that stuff out, but we'll get there. So that's it on this one. I will. See See you in the next one.